Welcome back boys and girls. In this video, I'm going to be sharing a tool with you that I have personally found very useful. The tool is called Make and you don't have to be a .NET developer to find it very useful. It's just my videos are for .NET. That's why the video is titled like that. But uh, .NET developers have a special trait where if they see something that's not Microsoft or it's not C Sharp, they're like, I don't want to touch it. This tool is not part of the Microsoft ecosystem. It is not a C-sharp tool. However, it is a very useful tool and it's very simple to use. So uh, if you want to see what it's about, <laughs> continue watching. Otherwise, don't forget, if you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comment section. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Don't forget to check out the description. And let's go ahead and get started. So very, very simple application. I have an app and I have a database. So uh, the app is a simple .NET 8 application. We have a reference to the database project and I have Entity Framework Core Design a database as a PostgreSQL Entity Framework. I have a model, super simple, and we have a database context where we have a DB set. Then in the program CS over here, I am just reg registering the database context. So on the surface, Super simple, we define a database, we registered in the app. Now, hopefully some of you have run into this problem. We want to generate migrations. So we would open up a terminal and let me make it, maybe close the other one. We will do .NET uh, EF um, migrations uh, add, and then I don't know, something like initialize. Uh, at this point, the tool will run and it will spit out some command. You will add this command, you will run it again, you'll be like, it doesn't work. So what do you do? Uh, ultimately, let's say after some Googling, after finding other videos, you're going to know that uh, I need to specify which project is going to be the startup project, which is going to be running the queries and uh, such. And then I want to specify which project is the project that contains the database, the DB context, where the migrations should be generated. So uh, let's do this. We're going to do .NET EF uh, migrations add. And again, I'm going to do init, but this time I'm going to be specifying a startup project which is going to be the app.cs project. And then we're just going to be specifying the database project where the migrations should be generated, right? So database CS project. And there we go. Now, if I run this, the migrations are going to be generated and there they are. Okay. So I'm going to delete them. Hopefully a command like this. Some of you may be like, I can remember it. Some of you will be like, I can't remember it. Uh, if you have uh, many different database projects, so which database are you using, etc., are you going to get this command consistently between what you're typing locally and your CI CD pipeline? You effectively want to have this chunk to be reusable. Okay. So we're literally going to take this chunk, collapse the terminal, and this is where the make tool comes in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to file system. I'm going to add a new file and I'm just going to call it make file. Okay. I will paste the command over here and I'm going to control forward slash. So comment uh, is a hashtag in this file. Okay. And from the beginning, JetBrains doesn't have support for make file, but then it says, do you want a plugin? Because I understand what this file is. And I was like, yeah, sure. So now I have syntax highlighting here. So uh, how does make work? Uh, let's say we are going to have a command called test and you can see writer is capable of running these commands. Uh, do note, this is a tab delimiter, not space delimiter. Uh, this is a common issue that can occur. If you are basically putting spaces, you have to indent with tabs, but ultimately we will run a command like echo and hello. Okay. I'll save this file. I'll open the terminal over here and I will make test. Okay. And there we go. And it just runs your command. So super simple. Uh, how you install make if you are on a MacBook like I am, <laughs> or a, a Linux machine, it may already be installed. If you're on Windows, you can use chocolatey to install make, uh, I think that's that will be the simplest approach. And uh, yeah, you basically just have the make tool. Uh, now another thing that you will probably want to learn is the thing that you're going to variate is this init. So you're going to want to effectively have this as a variable that you pass from the command line. Okay. So let's just quickly learn how we do 
uh, variables. So if I do make test and then I pass a variable, uh, then I want to use it. Actually, uh, heck, let's use emojis, right? Uh, see if it supports it. Maybe it will crash. There we go. Okay, uh, so we can pass parameters. Now all we have to do is define something like add migration and make sure that we are capable of specifying a name. Uh, let me remove all this space over here. Uh, take the name parameter, replace the init with it. And now I can uh, do very simple, as long as I am in the same directory as the make file, I can make add migration give it a name of init and there you have it. So now you have effectively a reusable script that you can run from a command line and that is going to generate your migrations. Hopefully from this point on you can say, okay, uh, I have a tool over here that allows me to build up, build up interactions with my project. If you create a dot GitHub folder and on the GitHub build machine, make is most likely already going to be installed. You can understand, okay, however I'm interacting with my project locally, I can now actually transfer it to my build pipelines as well. Okay. So your commands become reusable, not only across your team, not just to yourself. You don't have to create an MD file and, uh, you know, save these commands in there and have the documentation. You can just document the commands or, you know, uh, these can be so easy to read. Uh, you can just open the make file and see what it does anyway. And that is pretty much it for the video. So just a file with a bunch of recipes that you can invoke from a command line. You can share them between teams or other computers. So if you're running a GitHub workflow, uh, all of those things will be available there. Now, uh, please do leave a comment if you've ever used make yourself or a tool similar to make. And obviously, if you have any questions, you can also leave that in the comment section. Don't forget, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe. Not a lot of source code here, but if you would like the source code, please come support me on Patreon. Patreon supporters are what helps me make these videos and well, actually make these videos possible. So very, very big thank you to all of my current Patreon supporters. And as always, thank you for watching the video. Have a good day.